So uh, this is just a kind of a short recap of the Samnite Wars scenario that I was doing on Rise of the Roman Republic. Um, as you can see on the map, um, we've got Samnium here, uh, which is this region where you can see I've got a couple of Roman legions uh, occupying the cities there. Um, but as you can see, with these Roman control markers that I've put in cities around the map, uh, it looks pretty well Roman conquered. Which is the goal of the scenario. You want to have no tribes in revolt. Um, I can pick the tripod up here and point out that here on the alliance level track, it's all looking very Roman, which is also one of the other victory conditions. You can't have anybody on the non-Roman track or down here with the Samnites in the non-Roman ally track. Um, so their military conquest helped to facilitate those <clears throat> various alliances and uh, change those diplomatic courses Um, so, you get the conquest here and the alliance track going the right way, and that leads to Roman victory. The problem with those victory conditions is that one of them, in addition to controlling all the cities in Samnium, which they do, and of having no uh, regions in non -Roman, on the non-Roman allied track diplomatically, you can also not have any tribes actively in revolt. And despite the fact that this center of this map here looks very Roman, up here you can see this stack of legions. In Etruria, well, there's an Etrurian army there in revolt. They stacked themselves on the last turn of the game in a medium-sized city in Etruria, which means to get to there, to take the city, the Romans would have to siege it. Well, in the last turn of the game, and in the Samnite Wars, there are no siege engines. It's one of the rules of the scenario. And every each side, Sam, the Samnites and the Romans, have a negative three siege modifier. Well, Nobody's getting into a city on the last turn of the game with a negative three siege modifier, especially a medium-sized city. Now, a small city that has a defense factor of one, I could have tried, maybe if I'd stacked enough Roman legions there, I could have tried to assault it and take the city all at once. I would have taken massive casualties, but in the last turn, at least I would have wiped out the Etruscan revolt. But with a city of medium-sized three, that's a defense factor, or an IDS, intrinsic defense strength, I believe, of three. And when you're calculating your siege assault defense, you take the number of infantry SPs in the city and multiply it by that defense number. Well, the Etruscans had 19 infantry men in that city, infantry points, strength points in that city, and you would have multiplied that by three, and that's what I would have had to bring to bear, which I could not do. Uh, I could not bring nearly that number, that strength to bear, so an assault would have been suicidal against a full strength city. So it would have taken me several turns to reduce the walls of that city, because with the negative three modifier, I have to roll a nine on the die in order to get within the range of six or higher to do one point of city reduction damage. So, as you can see, there's no way that could all happen in one turn. <clears throat> Even with my different legions sitting here, some of these legions were doing other things on these last turns, which means I couldn't all just run the, the guys up there taking whatever attrition losses would happen and try and pile them all into that city. And so that leads to one of the 
weaknesses of this particular scenario, or at least of that victory condition of having no tribes actively in revolt. Um, because, it, first of all, the scenario itself turns into somewhat of a Italian tribe game of whack-a-mole. So you can, you essentially, there's a tribal revolt phase every turn, and you roll to see if any of these regions revolt. Uh, I got pretty lucky on those rolls for the Romans, um, that there were no new revolts over the past several turns. And the last major revolt that I had was the Etruscans, and they had a fairly large army that revolted. And so it was large enough that I actually moved the army down to threaten Rome, um, because at the time, all Rome had was the urban legion there. All the other legions were off doing other things. And I thought well, this would be a good opportunity to try and threaten Rome, and I could actually do something with one of the tribes. Um, one of my other complaints in this scenario is that when these regions revolt, the tribes are limited in what they can do outside of their region. They're allowed to siege cities in adjacent provinces or attack a force in an adjacent province, but they can't march all over the map uh, trying to cause trouble. And a lot of them did not have large enough armies to do so, so essentially I'd draw the chit for that particular tribe's activation but there was nothing they could do, so I would just pass and have them sit there and wait for the Romans to come to them. Um, so, with the Etruscans, with a large enough force, I thought, well, finally I can actually do something with one of these tribes and threaten Rome. <clears throat> so, they got all the way to Rome, but failed in their continuation role to try and do a siege operation and put Rome under siege. If a tribe fails its continuation role on an action outside of its province, then it basically just resets back to the border of its province, uh, which is what happened there. And then the next turn, the Romans swarmed into this hex here uh, to attack the Etruscans. And they did, and I was, unfortunately, despite outnumbering them, uh, I didn't get a very good roll for the Romans, <clears throat> meaning that the Etruscans, they, they traded casualties, meaning there was no loser, so the Etruscans didn't have to retreat. In the rules of the game, any tribe that loses a battle, whether it's a major or minor victory, uh, if they lose, they're just eliminated from the map. You just They just melt away and live to revolt another day. In this case, <clears throat> there was no loser, so the Etruscans could just sit there. Then the following turn, they get their activation shit and immediately ran up here to this, la to this city, which is, I forget what the city is, Ar Aretium, one of the few medium-sized cities on the map. Uh, meaning it would be a good place to hole up and just wait till the end of the game when they could force the Romans to lose by still being in revolt and the Romans not being able to destroy them. Uh, so, in that regard, uh, the game is a little bit weighed against the Romans. I don't think the no active tribes in revolt should be a victory condition or it should be changed in some way because, in theory, you could have a tribe revolt either in the augury chit on the last turn of the game, or, and if the augury chit's the last chit, then they automatically lose just because this tribe just revolted, even though they've, they're clearly dominating the hell out of the board and the diplomatic track. So it's a little bit... That, that no tribes actively in revolt thing is a little bit of an F you to the Romans in this scenario just because it can it can just pop up on the very last chit of the game and there's nothing the Romans could do about that. So that makes it a little bit frustrating because I would clearly say it was a Roman victory. Um, I mean the Romans, and you can see over here, um, that little stack of leader chits, all these green guys here, these are all Samnite leaders that ended up dead in the game, and there's only five of them. Four of them ended up dead. So, uh, the Romans effectively just cut through those Samnite leaders. The Romans also lost a couple leaders themselves. I think one died in office, and uh, the other one was thrown from his horse in an augury event. It was, happened to be Mus here, who was one of the best leaders that the Romans had in the game. <laughs> Bad luck getting thrown from his horse on an augury event. So, 
So the Romans, I mean, clearly, and then you can see the uh, number of legions they had here at the end of the game. Uh, you're looking at full armies there. These guys, they had the manpower, and they actually managed to marshal their leaders appropriately to do what they needed to do. Um, but these slightly technical victory conditions kind of kind of ruined it for them. So um, I, it hasn't really... It didn't make me not enjoy the scenario. Uh, I've enjoyed learning the mechanics of the game. I think it's a fascinating subject. And I don't know... I mean, I'm not... I haven't played a lot of Ancients games. But I don't know of any Ancients games that are truly at the operational level like this. And so, to me, that's fascinating. To see the early stages of the Roman Republic here, also fascinating. Uh, can you get a good scenario out of this period of history, or good scenarios. Um, th this one, maybe not so much. Uh, this is definitely a good solo learning scenario because you, if you're, whoever would be playing the Sam Knights, I, don't, I just don't feel like they wouldn't have a whole lot to do because they're, the, aside from the Sam Knights, who are fairly strong, they're going to get the brunt of the Roman assault and there's really not much they can do about it. Uh, I tried the same strategy I ended up using with the Etruscans. I tried holding, holding up in some of the cities here um, because one of the advantages the Samnites have is that their manpower replenishment can happen. They can get replacements in a besieged city. So I thought, well, I can have them hole up in a city and just increase the size of their army every turn while they're under siege and just bleed the Romans dry. Well, the, in, in, the siege interior cities, uh, the... the when you roll in the attrition, the siege attrition roll for people inside the city, it is brutal. And uh, the Samnites could not keep up. They rolled poorly, which didn't help. They could not keep up on the siege table because the Romans were all, since they controlled Campania and Latium here, all their besiege troops, sieging troops, were in supply, meaning they got reduction modifiers to their siege rolls. So you do not want to be facing besiegers who are well supplied. Uh, they'll just sit there and just starve you right out. So it ended up being a losing strategy for the Samnites. Um, their other strategy, which I used after most of their cities had fallen, was just to try avoidance and try to dance around the Romans and keep things going. But um, once all the cities in Samnium are under Roman control, then that they've satisfied that victory condition, and it doesn't matter if there's a Samnite army running around or not. Um, they've militarily controlled the Samnium province. So... Um, so, you know, the Samnites have things to do, but the, the tribal Italians just really don't. And even the, I had the Gauls show up, uh, I think, twice, and they didn't have a whole lot to do either. They could run down and try and threaten Rome, but same thing, they'll get picked off by uh, legions along the way. So uh, it's very much a Roman-centric campaign. I mean, I guess you could argue the whole game's Roman-centric, but in this one in particular, um, you're just... There's no real unified enemy that has any sort of power to bring to bear um, to threaten Rome, aside from just sort of generally. So, it's still entertaining to learn. Uh, I'm glad I learned it. Uh, definitely got a good grasp on the system. Uh, the next scenarios, all the other scenarios, I believe, have the naval rules in them, which I have not actually read yet, uh, but I think would add will add a lot to the game. Uh, probably in terms of complexity, too. And it's already... I, I don't want to say it's com complex. It's uh, fiddly in the sense that you have to remember a lot of little rules and exceptions for the Romans when you're assigning leaders, doing your leader elections every turn, and figuring out where your legions can go, trying to remember that, oh yeah, these guys, their imperium is in Sabinus or in Samnium or in Campania, and remembering that you can't just haul off and run out of there and chase somebody down. Uh, you got to do your Senate permission rolls, and, and uh, you know your manpower raising also requires Senate permission. There's just all these little, little things, little rules and little regulations that you have to remember just to even do the simplest thing with your Roman legions. So those are difficult things to to uh, keep track of. And that's what makes the game difficult. The rules in and of themselves are not very difficult. The movement rules are not particularly difficult. 
the combat rules are not particularly difficult. Not if you're used to, um, you know, a, a typical sort of hex encounter operational level game, uh, attrition things like that. It's all all fairly standard, really. I mean, the, the I guess the attrition isn't standard so much that the the movement is different and that it's unlimited. You're not limited by movement allowances. You can you're only limited by the amount of attrition you're willing to take. Which I think is pretty good. I think it's a it's a interesting system for this particular era, this type of game. So, on that note, um, I think I'll. I don't know if I'll move to another scenario right away. I've got some other things I want to get to the table. Some lighter fare uh, to sort of a little bit of a palate cleanser, and then uh, maybe try and pick one of these up again. Um, one of the next scenarios, maybe the Epirus or Pyrrhus scenarios, we'll, we'll see, but I may, um, once I go through those scenarios, post another video giving another sort of recap, just to, because uh, those games all have the naval rules, so that will give my, my take on the naval rules. This in itself is a sort of an incomplete review because I haven't played the full game, uh, quote unquote. So, we shall see more later. Thanks.